Everyone have a good day? Both received and poured out. And I'm excited for what the Lord's going to do tonight. We're here to minister to Him and be ministered to by Him, right? It's a beautiful relationship we have with Jesus. So let's stand and worship the Lord. Here we are, God, before your throne. We come through the living veil of your Son. We stand before you justified. Sanctified, we ask you to glorify us. Oh, who is like the Lord, seated in glory? Who is like the Lord? Who is like the Lord? Surrounded with angels, who is like the Lord? He rides upon the wings of the wind. He makes his name glorious in the earth. And oh, Christ.
Just like hell when you walk into the room, and isn't it just like hell when you walk into the room? Oh, isn't it just like heaven? When you walk into the room And isn't it just like heaven When you walk into the
my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree his body
a fragrance, a sweet fragrance in the room.
We are in such a sweet moment right now. Philippians 2, it says, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. But he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself, became obedient to death, even death on a cross. And therefore God exalted him to the highest place. He gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
I want to sing this again, but I just felt this. We're going to kneel at some point before the Lord. Every knee will bow. And I, I just felt like we're supposed to go on our knees. And I know some of you, <laughs> it may be difficult to go on knees, but maybe it's like one knee or just or whatever you can do. But it's just this place even of humility. We go low. He lifts us up in his timing the way he wants to do it. Our job is never to lift ourselves up. Our job is always to go low. It's always to be on our knees before him. So Jesus, we acknowledge you. You are king of kings. You are Lord of lords and you are worthy. You're worthy of it all. So we're going to just sing this again. Every eye on Jesus, every heart turned towards him. In a place of full submission, this place on our knees is a place of submission to say, Jesus, our lives are yours. We will go where you call us to go. We will do what you call us to do. <laughs> and I just feel this. We've said this before. Delayed obedience is disobedience. When God tells us to do something, he doesn't always give us the reason why. He doesn't always explain why, you, why we should do what he's telling us to do. He's God. <laughs> We're his children. His ways are higher than our ways. I feel like this is at least for one person out there. It's time to do what he's telling you to do. Don't wait for the understanding. Huh, maybe it's for me. <laughs> I think it's for me. Don't worry about it, guys. I got it. It's just for me. <laughs> that one's for me. <laughs> yes, Lord. So for anyone else who might be in that same boat, Lord, our answer is yes. He's looking for a yes. When he speaks, he's looking for children who will say yes. That's all he wants. He's not looking for the, well, let me get put out the five fleeces and see what's going to happen. He just wants a yes. So as we're on our knees, we're going to into a greater place of submission and humility. We're laying down our lives. And as a sign of laying down our lives right now, that we as a people from this day forward will not be caught up in things of this world, will not be enamored by the things of this world, our eyes will be fully fixed on Jesus. Our heart position will be on our knees at all times in reverent submission, wholehearted devotion. Lord, may this be the place where you speak to us. Would you do what you want to do right now in our hearts? As we set you as number one, I feel like there's a reset for, for some of us tonight. To reset Jesus as number one in your life. <laughs> and he just said this, and there's no number two. There isn't, there isn't a backup. There's no plan B. There isn't a, well, if this doesn't work out, I got my backup plan. He's not looking for, the, for those that will move forward with him with a backup plan. He doesn't want the backup plan. If you have a backup plan, you need to destroy it. Get rid of it. That's not faith. <laughs> yes. 
Faith is that complete dependence upon Him, trusting in Him, saying yes to Him. So, Lord, we will not have a backup plan. There is no plan B. We just say yes. I've heard it this way. It's like signing a contract that hasn't been written yet. All you're doing is you're just signing a contract. Well, what's on it? What's it going to say? What, what are the terms and conditions? He says it doesn't matter. That's not up to you. All he wants is our signature. All he wants is our yes right now. And so this is between you and Jesus. And I think it's easy to go, yeah, Jesus, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live for you from this day forward. But will you? <laughs> when he says go, when he says come, when he says turn to the left, when he says turn to the right, will you do it? Will you walk in that radical obedience? And some, I just feel there's some that, like, I don't even know that I'm, I can hear his voice. Well, just get on your knees. Get to know his voice. Start to spend time with him. Listen. Spend less time speaking and more time listening. You can't get to know his voice if you're always talking to him. <laughs> you have to listen. Let's just actually, before we even, before we do anything, let's just listen for a minute. Let's just wait. As you close your eyes, I just want you to picture him right in front of you. Don't say anything to him. Let him just speak to you. He's speaking. We're just not always listening.
As we're saying these words, Brandon was just showing me the scripture, and I feel, I, before he even showed it to me, I felt like the Lord wanted to do something here. We're saying, here am I, send me. And yet, when we look at the church, there's still such a fear to go and to share Jesus with people. A lot of times we'll go on a mission trip, right? And, and we'll go share the gospel, we'll go do those things, but then we come back into our own environment. And it's, it's crazy, because this is where we have authority. We actually, like, we don't have that same authority. When you go over and minister in other areas, you just don't, you don't have the authority that you have in your own land. And yet we're, we're silent in our own land. We're silent in our schools. We're silent in our workplaces. We're silent in when we're, when we're at the grocery store. How many people do you walk past when you go in the grocery store that don't know about Jesus? And, and we say, well, we're, we've got a lot going on. I don't have time to do that. We don't have time not to do that. But I don't know what they're going to do. They're going to reject. They're... I don't want to push it on them. Look, we are in a time. It doesn't matter if they don't like it. They need to know it. There's, there's been something that is, I've shared this with our church on a Sunday. There's been something that has been stirring up in me to where now, like, I, I don't care if I offend people. We, we, have to, we have to get past the point of I don't want to offend someone. I had somebody, this is just a quick story here. I had someone that drove up in the, to the food bank. You know, every Saturday we have families that are just coming up one after the next. And, and I was sharing Jesus with them. And, and most of the time, like, they're, they're accepting Jesus. They're like, yes, I need to know Jesus. They're weeping and crying. This guy, it was like there was just something blocking and, and I'm telling him about Jesus. And, and he's kind of like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, so do you want to know him? Do you want to get to know him? Do you want to give your life to him? Because it's going to be amazing. It's going to shift everything for you. And I was like, oh, he's going he's to say yes. He's going he's gonna to make that shift. And it's not, a, it's not a one time. It's not like you say the prayer and you're in. It's like, okay, now you're good. No, it's the beginning of a journey of walking into the fullness of, of what God's created you to be. But he, I was, I was like, oh, I was sure he was going to take that step. And he looked at me and he just said, ah, I don't know. I'm just not ready. <laughs> and I reached in the car and I grabbed his head and I turned it towards me. And I said, no! <laughs> you need to know Jesus. And I feel like we're in this time. We don't just go, well, they said no. I'm just going to leave them alone. I don't, I don't want to push it on them any longer. You don't know that they're going to drive away, get in an accident, and that's their last breath that they breathe, and you were the last person they talked to. And this isn't out of an obligation. This isn't out of an overflow of the love of Jesus that is in our hearts that we say, we have to do this. It's time for the church to wake up. And, and we say, well, we're waking up, but fear still has a grip 
on our life. It, no, I, yeah, I shouldn't say it that way. Fear is losing its grip. <laughs> And, and I feel like tonight, there's something that's going to break if you, if you let it, if you say yes to it. And, and, I, and I will tell you, not, not the pastors in this house, not when I say like, like we had, I don't know, 60 pastors up here. On, if you were here Thursday night, pastors lined up along here from all over the world. Um, but I, there's, I, I feel like there's... It, it's that lift up ye, your heads, O oh, you gates, that the King of Glory may come in. And there is, there's something with pastors. I, there, and so it, it's like if it's not happening in the, in the leadership of the church, how is it going to happen in the, in the rest of the churches? And so we need to pray for pastors. <laughs> but even if your pastor isn't doing it, and here's the thing. I just see it's like something... I, I got to be careful how I say this. Uh, I love pastors. I'm a pastor. <laughs> I better love pastors. <laughs> and, and it's just awakening in my spirit. But I, I go, what is, there's something like where it's like, well, the pastors are busy doing things, so they'll send the other people to go do the work. And I'm like, no, we, I want to be out there on the front lines. I want, if, if somebody's going to get hit, I want to get hit. Let me be the first one to say, don't just go do it, like do it, follow me. But we need leaders that are going to step up and say, follow me into the battle. We're going to go into the battle and, and we need to lead the way. So I, I pray for pastors, but I pray for leaders. I pray for, and everyone in this room, I say, here's the thing is you have an opportunity to lead others into the battle, but you have to, the fear has to be broken off of you. If there's fear, if you're holding back at any point, or if there's a busyness that you're just too busy to do this, there's, what else is more important than souls? What is so important in your life right now that you can't share Jesus with people? I'm asking you. Is there something that's more important I mean, I would say this. Maybe there's one thing is we need our relationship with Jesus. We, we, we need to know him and not like run out and start blasting people with, with pounding people with Jesus. We don't do that. So we need to know his love. But that doesn't take 25 years sitting in a pew. Sorry if I'm offending anyway. <laughs> I just feel such a, like there's something, the Lord wants to do this tonight. The Lord wants to break this off of us. Look, there's, there's times, there, it's crazy for me, I'll go, I'll go preach the gospel to someone and then I'll go into the grocery store and, I'll, and I won't say anything. So I'm right there with you and I'll be like, ah, you know, I got to get back. Times, <laughs> I've got so many things going on. Uh, it's a new season. We are in the last days. And you're in your last days regardless. <laughs> your days are limited. <laughs> Even if he doesn't come back before you go up to see him, you're in your last days and we are in the last we are in the last days. So there is these are urgent times. We're just praying with some of the pastors right in the middle here. I believe the Lord is about to give strategies. We're asking the Lord for revival, and I feel like the Lord's like, stop asking for revival and start starting revival. Let's step into revival. Let's begin to actually do this. And as we step into it, the Lord is going to give strategies from heaven on how to do this. He's going to give us ideas that, and, and, and I was saying, it's going to be our 0.1% that we go, Lord, I, I'll do it, but it's not going to do much. And then we're going to step out, do that little itty bitty bit. And then God's going to come flying through. And like all of a sudden, that one person that you thought you were going to lead to the Lord turns into a thousand people. His math is not our math. So, I'm going to have Brandon, he's going to read this, and I feel like he's going to break 
fear over us. And then here's your job. Don't just go and do it, but you're going to break fear over others as well. In the church, it's time to break the fear off of people, that they would rise up to the very thing that we're called to. This is what we are called to. We're to rise up as, as an army. We're to prophesy. We're to declare the truth. And this is our time to do it. Our life is short on this earth. We only get to do this. This is the one thing. You can't do this in heaven. You only get to do this here. So don't go, well, I'll do it later. Uh, there is no later. This is your time to share the gospel. That Philippians, I love it where it just says, we're like stars in the universe that hold out the word of life. So it, if there's fear in your life still to hold you back, I want you to raise your hand. And for the rest of you, you're lying, so put your hand up. <laughs> and I feel like this is going to be this yes, and we're going to pray into this, and we're, it's going to get broken over us. We're going to step into a new realm, a new understanding of our calling, our purpose, and it comes out of love. Perfect love breaks fear. It removes fear. It casts off fear. Amen? So hold your hands up. Here we go. Start by saying this, Holy Spirit, baptize my imagination. One more time, say, Holy Spirit baptize my imagination now say his name say Jesus say this I will be unoffendable we're gonna read Malachi 316 but J listen we know another 316 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Malachi 3.16 Then those who feared the Lord with all filled reverence spoke to one another and the Lord paid attention and heard it and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord with an attitude of reverence and respect and who esteemed his name. They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On that day when I publicly recognize them and openly declare them to be my own possession, that is my very special treasure, and I will have compassion on them and spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him him now listen I want you to do something I want you to grab somebody's hand that's beside you come on all across this place all across this place all across this place grab somebody's hand squeeze their hand let them know you love them right here right now right here right now and begin to pray in tongues for the next 60 seconds violently come on come on Come on! Come on! Oh, Jesus Christ! Now! 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 Come on, let it rise! Come on, let it rise! Let it rise! Yes! Something's about to break. Something's about to break. Something's about to break. Fear has to go. Now! 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 Oh! Come on! If you feel his freedom, begin to jump! 
Lift your hands to heaven. And for everyone who wants it right now, say, Jesus, Jesus. a fresh baptism of love. A fresh baptism of love. Every trace of fear, Every trace of fear. Has, to go. has to go. Love, love. Equals. equals brave. brave. I declare boldness over you right now. Boldness. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Boldness. As you stand in perfect love, all fear. Someone say all fear. All fear. You need to turn and look at somebody right in the eyes really quick and tell them all fear all fear say all, all. say all. all all fear all fear all worry all, worry. all anxiety all, all death and suicide and depression and fear has to go tonight We're just going to do one final version of this song here. Uh, so now just grab hands with the people next to you. We started with this very first song. We're in this battle as one. So even as we go out, as we, as we fight this battle, as we go for souls, we don't do it alone. We're not in this battle alone. And we need each other. So there's just this reminder. We have this baptism of love now. Fear is broken off. And we have a spirit of unity in this house. This house, I say, the church. All of Colorado. All the United States. <laughs> all across the world. We, we, have, we have so many people from around the world. I just something special that the Lord's doing. So just as we close out this worship, we're just going to declare this blessing again, just over, over the family, over the church. So let's just do that. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord face to
Guys, just give the Lord a hand. Give him a shout. He's worthy. He's worthy. Jesus, we love you. You're worthy of our praise. We give you all the glory tonight. All the praise and all the honor. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he is so good. No more fear. You're just baptized with his love. Amen. Amen. Ha. All right, take a deep breath. <laughs> you guys can be seated. Wow. You guys give the worship team just a huge hand for the. You know what I love? I mean, they, they have like a set of pl songs that they're planning to sing. And then, and then we just take it a total different, the Lord just goes a total different direction. And they're just, it's so awesome how they just flow. This is, this is an amazing team. <laughs> Thank you, guys. So good. So good. Oh. We have a few casualties on the ground, but other than that. <laughs> We're going to... We're going to watch a video in just a second here. Uh, you're going to get an, uh, kind of the, a quick update on Iris and the things that Heidi and the team are doing uh, around the world here. And uh, I think it'll just set the stage. So just give it a sec. We'll just wait for people to get back to their seats, and catch their breath. All right, let's, we can go ahead and play that video. Terrorists have destroyed businesses, 
farms, schools, homes, wiping out thousands of people's communities and livelihoods. The displaced are now seeking shelter in camps or in the houses of their family members in what seems to be slightly safer regions. Conditions are crowded and food and basic necessities are being stretched beyond limit. Poverty is spreading and has been accelerated by the global pandemic. But through it all, through it all, Jesus remains the living hope and the answer to all of these needs. to the radical terrorism and global COVID pandemic, we at IRIS believe it's the perfect time for us to be the light into these dark situations, and we're feeding them hungry spiritually and physically. All of us are called to stop for the one in need, empowered by Holy Spirit. Love is an action. IRIS is reaching approximately 42,000 individuals each month, including the internally displaced, the widows, the disabled, the most vulnerable, and the marginalized families within our communities. We are just so grateful to God for people who have just said, yes, I believe in what you're doing, and I just want to walk with you in this. We're just undone by your love and your gratitude. We're seeing Jesus again and again bringing hope as our anointed teams continue to distribute spiritual and physical food to these precious people. Not only are we meeting the practical needs, but spiritually we are seeing hope rise as people are receiving New Testaments and audio solar Bibles in their own dialect. Thank you all so much because of you. Together we are able to be Jesus' hands and feet on the ground. Can we just take a few moments and just be still for a few moments and perhaps even close your eyes and just allowing the Holy Spirit, the Holy, Holy Spirit, just to just minister to each one of us. Just to be. Just to be still. To be still and know. Just to be still and know. I am your God.
even as you're just resting and allowing the Holy Spirit to be here. I know we just was watching something and and I know it is capturing all of our hearts. I do have the honor of being on the global board of Iris Ministry and uh, consistently get to see the picture, hear the story, and also uh, recognizing this overwhelming amount of needs and but also opportunities, but also the incredible generosity and the graciousness of God's people. And right now we're feeding about 45,000 people a day, every single day. But uh, I do know, Mama Heidi, that there's a little dream here. And I just, I want you to hear from God. I'm not, but I just felt it in my spirit while I was watching them. What if our family here, the family of families in this place, that we came together, if that was on a monthly basis, or even some of the marketplace leaders, some business leaders that is in here, we would just come together. And I, I would love to see 5,000, just out of this group, five thousand more people every single day that would both get physical food but also get the bread of life every single day i just I, i'm just saying that by faith I, I want to be involved i want our family to be involved but i also want to invite that as a family of families and yes we are going to take up an offering but i also sensing this is probably the greatest investment and i'm saying that uh, i was just actually we were just in a board meeting and i didn't want to say too much but all i want to say uh, I have never seen such an integrity, and I've never seen better stewardship of resources. And I have two nonprofit organizations myself, uh, but I'm on this board and I'm watching this. I've never seen such a fruit and such a result and return on investment. So I'm saying that especially for people in the marketplace that are good investors. So this is an incredible soil. And uh, I see it as such a privilege to be part of this. So could we just, as a family, just allowing the Holy Spirit for us to do something that is supernatural? Because everything that is happening over there is supernatural. And sometimes we need a supernatural seed for a supernatural harvest. So that means that the Holy Spirit is not just given by reason whatever I have in the wallet. I'm not telling you what you're supposed to do. I'm just asking the Holy Spirit to come in. And when the Holy Spirit starts to do His work, because all of the things we're seeing over there, that's His work. And this is his family, Iris is his family. So can we do that together as a family? We just, we're not going to help God, but we just got to allow the Holy Spirit. I know there's sons and daughters and we will heal, we will hear that still small voice. But I felt especially some of you that have a marketplace anointing. And I was just thinking about it was, it was in a moment like this, I was with, with Heidi and some of our friends at the voice of the apostle in Nashville. And there were some needs we had. And I just felt the Father just says, and there was a business guy that I knew and several of them. And I just felt, I, I want you to bring this connection. And we started to build that bridge over and just to see the fruit that has had over in Mozambique. But I felt that the same, there's other people here, marketplace people. They've just been waiting for an opportunity. I'm not going to help God, but I'm sensing there is some people in this room. All I am doing just trying to be obedient to what I felt the Holy Spirit put on my heart. And you will know it because marketplace people, you are hearing his voice. So especially if you have been anointed for business and you're sensing that, that if you also went coming in, I mean, some of you just can come in and say, I will take a 40-foot container uh, and starts to send out on a regular basis. Other one, but practically speaking. So you can either come up to me personal or contact Iris Ministry, but just for us to build a bridge over. So we're taking a few moments. How many of you know this is holy right now? How many you can recognize? Can we just lift up our hands just, first of all, just as a place of surrender? I felt tonight is one of those nights we're all just placing ourselves in the offering, offering plate. First of all, we're presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice, which are just a reasonable service. But second of all, everything that we have and everything that we do belongs to Him. So, Father, I just thank you for this incredible family. I thank you for this incredible worship that has taken place. And all I know is that worshipers are givers. I don't think anybody, we are not doing it out of guilt. Or we're not doing it out of pressure. But we're seeing that the Father is doing something. Not just in Mozambique, but all over the world. But right now, what we're seeing taking place. 
then the father is just inviting us. He could do it himself, but he have chosen to do it through his sons and daughters, through family. And I'm just asking now, holy, holy, holy spirit, just whisper with that still, small voice. And help your sons and daughters hear what the spirit has to say. So come, Holy Spirit. Sweet dove just rests upon us. So we're going to put up on the screen. And I want you to see, and all of this goes to, it's going to go to Iris. I don't know if there's a special thing on there for tonight's offering, but if we can, guest speaker, conference, but yeah, and just making sure that tonight's, that all of that goes. But also, remember some of the marketplace people in this room and, I have opportunity. I'm going to be in a place where there's a warehouse full of food in a couple of weeks in Minnesota. Maybe some of you will take and help us to get some containers and some larger thing. And also we have the offering plates. This is just going to be a family thing. It's going to go around and, and, and some of you even on a monthly basis. I'm one of those that is part of a monthly thing. Also with Iris Minister, I have this incredible privilege. So thank you so much, family, for being obedient, for hearing that still small voice. And could we just make it hard for people to go to hell and easy for people to go to heaven because they get to experiencing a God just like Jesus. So in that Muslim province, people are getting natural food. But pretty much it's almost 100% of the people in this desperate situation are receiving Jesus. There's an incredible harvest right now. And I see this room full of harvesters. So congratulations. We just talked about that. We... We do want to say yes, and perfect love have cast out fear, but it is also an opportunity for us right now to start to add some names to the Lamb's Book of Life. And uh, there is room for a lot of Mozambicans in the Lamb's Book of Life right now. And there's a whole team over there that is just waiting. All they need, these harvesters, is ready. And they're just looking for some of us that would just help them to be able to bring in the harvest. So I love you people, and I bless you people. I bless you, my family, for your generosity in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if you guys feel it, but there's just a special presence in here tonight. It's his presence. <laughs> He's so good. It's his presence and his presence. I feel like there's just presence tonight. <laughs> You're going to get some of his presence tonight. <laughs> ah. Well, I'm going to introduce this amazing special mama uh, and I want to I want to pray over her as well so can, I'll tell you what can you guys stand up are we done with the offering let's just honor Heidi mama Ida as she comes up Will you guys just, will you guys lift your hands? Just put your hands out towards her. And we're just going to pray over her. Shoo. Sometimes we think, well, you know, Heidi has kind of put her on a pedestal. <laughs> She's in the middle of a battle. She needs prayer all the time. So first off, I just pray that the Lord would put Heidi on our hearts as she's in the middle of warfare in Pemba and around the world and the things that she's doing. And so I just, Heidi, I just felt this over you. I know you know Isaiah 58, but I felt the Lord just say, you're, you're, you're living the fast that the Lord has chosen. Father, I thank you. We just thank you right now as we lift our hands towards Heidi. Lord, we lift her up. Lord, we thank you for the strength that you have for her in this season. She's doing the very things that she's been called to do, that we are called to do, loosing the chains of injustice, untying the cords of the yoke, 
setting the oppressed free, breaking every yoke, sharing food with the hungry, providing the poor homeless with shelter. When she's seeing the naked, she's clothing them. She's not turning away. And this is what the Lord will do. And so, Father, we just pray this over Heidi right now, over Heidi, over Iris, over the entire team. It's not just Heidi doing this. She has an amazing team that is, that is with her in Pemba uh, and then all throughout the world. So, Father, I thank you right now. This is what is, the Lord is going to do, and he's already doing it, that your light will break forth like the dawn. And your healing will appear quickly. We declare that and we decree that right now over Iris, over oh. Heidi. <laughs> then your righteousness will go before you. <laughs> and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. And when you call, huh, and then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help. And his response will be, here am I. Lord, I thank you. There's more. <laughs> if those that do away with the yoke of oppression, which she has done with the pointing finger and with malicious talk, and she has said yes to every one of these things, and if you'll spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry, and you'll satisfy the needs of the oppressed, this is what the Lord is doing and is going to do right now, then... Your light, Heidi, Iris, will rise in the darkness. And your night will become like the noonday. And the Lord will guide you always. And he will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land. And he will strengthen your frame. And you will be like a well-watered garden like a spring whose waters never fail. And your people, <laughs> your children, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins. And they will raise up the age-old foundations. And you will be called a repairer of broken walls. Shoot. You will be called a restorer of streets with dwellings. So, Father, we thank you for the anointing on Heidi and on Iris. Lord, we thank you for this season that you have them in. It's been a tough season, but, Lord, I thank you that you're shining upon them, you're resting upon them, and you're strengthening them for this very time. And when they call upon you, your response will be, here am I. In Jesus' name. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for praying. Thank you. Oh, just sit here for a minute. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, thank you for, oh, for the Adels. Thank you, Lord. For Paul. Thank you, Lord. For Leif and Jennifer and Christy and Mike, and this amazing congregation. Thank you for Joseph and Sean and Rebecca and Jean and Tisa, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your body that cares, Lord. Thank you for your body that cares. Shuri araba koturo Oh, thank you, Lord, that you care. Thank you that you care. Lord, you know me. <laughs> you know me like nobody else knows me. You know me. You're the potter. And we're the clay. <laughs> I can't ask you to mold them. I can't pray this prayer for them, Lord, but I ask that you would mold me and make me, Lord, after your way. Take my little life, God, and just take it, Lord. Take me, use me, bruise me if need be, stretch me, 
mold me, smash me, fill me, empower me, Lord. Empty me out, Jesus. Whatever you want, Lord, it's all about you. And right now, I just, uh, just want to love on you. Just, just what I'm sensing. Uh, if, if you wouldn't mind closing your eyes, if you wouldn't mind, just thankful for all the security guards, their eyes stay open. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for big angels with big eyes open. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I, I want to st start this way, not because it's uh, a form. I don't want to invite any, anybody up to play. Uh, I just, I know that I've been learning um, over the decades that if we would be holy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy present with him that he would be holy present with us so all all I want to do right now is just love on him I can't love on him for you. I can't give your life away. I can't even pray that he would smash you, although I used to think that I could. <laughs> is that if we, if we, each one of us in this room and each one listening and each one watching and listening now or in the future, if you would just be fully present with him, hey, he could just crash in the room tonight. <laughs> so I... I just love to, love to sing in the spirit, not about him. So many amazing songs about him. But I would just like to sing to you, Lord. Just even, even if... Uh, even if I don't hit the notes, Lord, I just want to sing to you because you're so, so, so good. But it would be really beautiful if the other pots in the room. <laughs> <laughs> we are what's going to come out of those cracks Lord oh. fragrance could it be a fragrance the fragrance of Christ Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, so, maybe go ahead, you lead. I, I'm a guest here. 
So as a guest here, I'll, I'll follow. I'll follow. You lead. As he leads you, 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 you just go up and in. It's possible. I can go up and in for me. <laughs> you go up and in for you, and then corporately, hi, watch what'll happen. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He loves this. Oh, how he loves this. He loves it, he loves it. Yeah. Yeah. More. a few minutes, just a few more minutes, just a few more minutes. More could happen in one minute in the anointing than 
decades of your striving. Hey. like a paintbrush, <laughs> just paint whatever you like, but would you please light the paintbrush on fire? <laughs> hey, just light me on fire, holy Jesus, <laughs> light me on fire, Holy Spirit, hey, light me on fire, Abba. <laughs> Let the world watch me burn. <laughs> Woo! See, I can't pray that for you. <laughs> I can't pray that prayer for you, but somebody, somebody out there, some way, maybe, just maybe, maybe, might want to pray that prayer over themselves. Woo! You know, um, hey, I never, <laughs> I never saw anyone when they looked at a masterpiece. I love to, I love when I get layovers, I love to go to museums and just look at the art. Sometimes uh, it's not that good. This <laughs> thing on it. But sometimes it's amazing, extraordinary. I'm going to open my eyes now. <clears throat> you can do what you like. If you're afraid, just keep them shut. <laughs> the altar is open, by the way, anytime you want. Uh, I don't know why you have to say that. <laughs> but anyway, so oh, I'm really uh, just in such a tender place. But as you look at art, beautiful art, or even not so beautiful art, have you ever just looked, just looked there and said, what a magnificent brush that artist might have had. A few artists in the room said, yeah, I was thinking about that brush. But almost all of us in this place, there's no way you would be raving about a brush. You'd be like, that brush rocked. That is the most extraordinary brush I ever saw. What kind of brush painted that? <laughs> We're so, I don't want to talk about you. When I'm talking thing, diff, challenging things. I talk about, when I'm talking about challenging things, I'll talk about me. Like places of weakness, places of weirdness, places of weakness and weirdness. I'll talk about me because I don't want to talk about you. That wouldn't be nice. That would be not polite. Whether I was in private or public, that would just not be nice. That's just not nice. And we're called to be nice. 
But I can talk about me and my weirdness because I'm allowed to. Because it's me and my weirdness. But I have never, ever understood why, this is even for myself, why would I be so concerned about a brush when there's a piece of art? You know? A piece of art. Why would I be, why would I be concerned about even how God would use me? I'm, I'm a brush. <laughs> I love that. But as a brush, please, can you take that picture down? Because I'm trying to flow and it, it's upsetting me. If, because it's, it's like this big picture. It's like, that's better. Are they, are they tricking me? No. Um, I, I, I just love the fact that we get to be the brush. We, you know, that's extraordinary. And if God would just take you as a little brush or me as a little brush, and, and I just thought of that tonight, like, it light me on fire, and it's like fire painting. I would have liked to be a fire painting. Like, what would it look to be fire painting? Like, he just goes, bish, 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 but he's, you're on fire everywhere you go. Boom, there's like fire. That's that's really cool, but it's hot. If God could just take our little lives and shoka raba, light us on fire and wash out. But he's, he's the potter, we're the pot. He's the artist, we're the brush. He's the writer, we're the pencil or pen. Or iPad, <laughs> computer, something or other. But let's let's just focus our eyes on Jesus. He is the author and finisher. So here's some more of my weirdness. I'm starting with weirdness, and I'll probably end with it too. And it'll just be all along the whole night. But it's a holy kind of weirdness when we're free to, to talk about our stuff. Because if we're free to talk about our stuff, we can grow together. And I imagine from the other speakers and dear friends of mine, I imagine they're very honest with you. I know I mean it. I, I, that's not a joke. I know these guys. We vacation together. That's like I know them. I know them. I know. They're honest with their stuff. So um, did y'all have something like a pandemic thing in America? Some of y'all, some of y'all just said, no, we didn't have it. <laughs> we didn't have it. Didn't touch us. We didn't have, it was cute. You know, we were, we were, we tried that too. Yeah, we, we tried that. I remember when, um, <laughs> first, <laughs> I was actually with these two beautiful brothers and we were in Malaysia and I mean, we were all, we were, we were a little arrogant. We all, we all, we all three were, not the wives, but I'm a wife. The husbands, well, I was arrogant as a wife. They were arrogant as husbands, okay? Just, you know, putting it into perspective. We were like, what are people afraid of? Like, you know, dude, we didn't say dude. We don't do the dude word too often. You know, he's from Philippines. He's from Norway. I'm from Mozambique. We don't do the dude too often. But if we were to do the dude thing, it'd be, hey, dude, um, we're, not, we're not getting sick. You know, we, we all said that. Like, we're in Malaysia. People all tried to shut us down. Nobody's shutting us down. We hugged everybody. Hug, hug, hug. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Hug. No, we weren't. Nobody's getting COVID here. That was awesome. 
And we were, we were really quite, you know, quite excited the fact that other people cancel, but not us. We would not cancel because we are like kingdom people, raw. And uh, we're not getting, we're not having any of it, you know. And um, I mean, we meant it. We were sincere. It's not that we weren't sincere. People are sincere about their beliefs. And we were sincere, only they didn't curtsy. That's me. I'm sincere. And then I had to go some through Singapore, and they said, uh, we're going to let a few people in, you know, but they're going to have to sign a waiver. And I'm like, a waiver? What kind of people sign waivers to go to church? You know, but they signed waivers. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and then I got to Philippines. That's where they're from. And I remember it was really, it was, you know, this is the body of Christ is so wonderful and so weird. So we're going we're gonna to have a stadium meeting, okay? Nobody knew what was going to happen. So we're going to have a stadium min- meeting. Sweet Jesus, we're having it no matter what. Because it's always good to have a lot of people. Always. And that's really how it works. A lot of people is good. And that's it. And so we're going to have this thing and, you know, the world's starting to get a little concerned and things are starting to shake a little bit. What's a mask? What, what, what? I saw that. What, what's a mask? And suddenly, I mean, suddenly get to Philippines Stadium, right? No, wrong. And I remember still some of the sweet people that were trying to organize it. I mean, that's hard. You know, when you step out of the boat and you rent a stadium, that's a big old thing to rent. I'm going to tell you another story about a really weak point. One of the weakest, most miserable moments of my life. God turned it, it he turned it out, no, no. He turned it out. Do you say, I, can't, I don't do English half the time. So sometimes I mess up my English. You, some of y'all don't believe that's true, but it's true. When you work in other languages and then English has to come back in Jesus' name. So uh, if, I, if I did something wrong, I didn't mean to, language-wise. Other things, you never know. It depends on who's deciding whether it's right or wrong. So anyway... I was, um, when I was invited, first time I was invited, I think it was the first time, yeah, it was. First time I was invited to speak in a stadium, I was kind of excited. Why? Because I got, you, you're really sweet, but you can stop because it's okay, thank you. But I'll give you a hug first because you're really, you are so awesome. Thank you. Because you never know where I'm going. Like, okay. So anyway, he's awesome. He really is. It's just, it's just me again. Um, I'm, I'm just, he can come back later though. It's just, it's like, just like when it comes to the time. Ooh, I, I just flow so much. So I'm like, whoa. And I'm going, anyway, there's this big stadium. And I'm excited because I was born again, saved. I was saved at 16, filled with the Holy Ghost, and uh, preached on the street for years. God called me to preach. I preached, I preached, I preached. I never, ever dreamt of being invited in church. That was not on my radar. God called me to preach, so I started preaching. I preached on the street for years. I still preach most of the time, most of the time. I preach with no mic. Yeah, most of the time at home in Cabo Delgado with about 50 of my colleagues who are not melon challenged. (laughs) I'm the only one that's melon challenged. I don't wear all kinds of cream. They laugh at me. It's true because it's just not happening for some of I mean... The Nordic people, how God could send us to the 
he's God, I'm not, hooray. There's cream now, thank you, Jesus. But um, <laughs> I'm excited, finally, years and years later, I, I had gotten to invite, invited to a few churches by then, and um, probably a few thousand, actually, if I'm being honest. Sometimes the Lord taps you and says, be honest. It wasn't early on, it was like kind of midway, and and this very excited minister, his name's Derseo. He's a really sweet man. He got absolutely rocked in some meetings. And so he decides that he's going to rent a stadium where I'm going to preach. So I said, okay, I'm going to come. I, I just had, didn't pray enough about it because I was so excited. You ever done something like that? It's like, yes, I'm going to preach in a stadium. It's going to be amazing what God's going to do. It's just going to be. Oh. And so he forgot to um, kind of have a unity thing with the other pastors. You know what I mean? He just was doing the stadium and he was inviting me. The only problema was that no other pastor in the entire region believed that a woman should preach. And so that was a problema if you wanted to have a stadium meeting. And so it, I didn't know any of this, thank you, Jesus. It was all over the radio, it was all over the television. You know, you want radio and television things, you want advertising to go forth for your stadium things, you know, unless it's this kind <laughs> of advertising. So um, they, they, they said, okay, you know, I love to pray, I love to worship, so I'm gonna go in the side room. Of course, I'm fasting, going in the side room, gonna pray, and they're like, maybe you wanna wait a while, we'll just pray some more. I'm like, okay, and I'm thinking, as I drove in, I thought, wow, we must be really early because there are no cars, no cars whatsoever, no cars at all. I'm thinking, wow, maybe they all walked. This really, um, people are really concerned about, you know, the environment because there's just no cars. And so I, I, I get in finally, finally, dear so, this precious man, precious pastor comes he comes and he's just like, <laughs> Mama, he calls me Mama. He still calls me Mama. And I still let him. <laughs> Mama, um, we ain't exactly have as many people as we thought, you know. <laughs> We're going to come. I said, that's okay. You know, I preach on stop for the one. He's like, that's about, that's about it. You know. <laughs> like, he said, uh, we got the ushers and me. <laughs> it's my first stadium. <laughs> so, so I, I said, Jesus, I feel like right now I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I didn't say it out loud, I said it in my head. I'm just saying, I feel like, I feel like this little mean. Like, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel good at all. There's a few ushers in me. And how does Dersail feel? He, he just like signed a blank check that he didn't have money in the, bank account to do it. It's this massive stadium. And I don't know if it was massive. It was massive to me because it was empty. <laughs> and the Lord was like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do right now? I said, besides cry. <laughs> he said, yeah, what are you going to do right now? I said, I'm going to worship. So you're going to worship all by yourself, or are you going to, like, invite the ushers? <laughs> so I thought I'd invite the ushers. So 
I knew where I needed to worship. Oh, I needed to worship on that stage, which was, was bigger than this building the stage was. You know, she kind of tells you how awesome it was that it was empty. <laughs> so I called the ushers up on the stage and um, I said, we're just going to worship in. I just started worshiping. I worshiped with all that is within me because I worship for the audience of one. And I've heard people, you know, they've even written my husband, bless his heart. He's fielded a lot of these questions like, does she, does she actually, is that really who she is? As if, like, as if I needed to be somebody else for you. And I just started worshiping, and, and then he said, now, I want you to preach. And I said, yes, Lord. And I didn't even have a long, you know, struggle about knowing what to preach about. It was about stopping for the one. It was about the Good Samaritan. It was about seeing the world, one in front of you. And I was able to look at all of them. Each one. Like, I could just like. <laughs> and that was a day that I, I had a really big opportunity to fail a test or to pass a test. And I, I've preached many, many full stadiums since then, but this particular one in Philippines was kind of similar to that. Only people wanted to come, but they couldn't. And this precious uh, woman who had helped put it together, she had asked the other pastors. There were a whole lot of pastors. They weren't allowed to meet. I think they... They said first we could have like 50, and then they brought it down to 20. And this precious woman, she was so determined. Because, you know, when you have a vision, and, and maybe the vision, like I knew I was, I was going to carry the glory in stadium, not because I'm somebody special, but because my God is awesome and he can use anyone and he'd shown me that so who am I to argue with him I, I just I, I was concerned why he would let me um, go through such a thing and and also my dear friend who really went through it and you know I, I think we all the ushers and and I called Roland can we write a really big check because <laughs> this man's I mean, that's all I could think of. I'm just being so real. I just felt so bad for him, way worse than I felt for me, because <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna live. But he might have been put in jail over that. You know, you can't pay your bills. We got up and we all were on that on that stage there and just talking about stopping for the one and and God just crashed in, you know. He just, <sighs> all of us were laid out. All seven of us. <laughs> just like, <sighs> face down, sobbing. God, use us. Take us, use us, bruise us if need be. See, it was just like you were talking about, kind of you two were talking. I have my eyes closed, but I know your different voices, but still it was flowing together. And it's like if we need to just wait till we can go to another nation to share the gospel or fill a building so we have courage to share the gospel or we want to be an evangelist as long as a building's already full, then we're missing the plot and we're missing the points show. So as much as it was painful for so many people to lose so many loved ones and to go through so much trial and 
difficulty and, and financial shaking, emotional shaking, spiritual shaking, shaking on every level. God's word says he will use all things together for the good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So God said all things. He means all things. So he used and uses all things, including the pandemic, including the cyclones, the earthquakes, the wars, the floods, the trauma, the difficulty, all things. He says, I will work all things together for the good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That would be... Would it, would it perhaps be you too? <laughs> all things. I will work all things together for the good. So there I was. And this poor sweet girl, I remember, she's not a girl. She's just so tiny you think she's a girl, but she's not. She's a woman. She's an amazing woman of God. And she was like, Mama, I know it. I know it. I know it. They're going to change it the last minute. I know it. The last second, they're going to say we can have the stadium meeting. I said, no, they're not, sweetheart. No, it's not happening. And um, I remember, <laughs> you remember? This sweet woman of God was with me. And she had an economy ticket. Somebody blessed me with an upgrade. They paid for it. I was happy about it. I, I would have, you know, liked to get two, but you don't fuss. You just say thank you, and she's so sweet. And uh, the Lord said, you need to get Rebecca a business class ticket. I said, really? He said, yeah, right now. So I remember calling. I think I woke up, I woke up somebody who I love. I said, I need a business class ticket, she said, and it was some bizarre amount of money. It really was. And you know those things, and you're just like thinking, that's, 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 that's dumb. <laughs> that, that's, that's wrong, you know. Had I gotten a, an advance, I could have maybe understood it, but I, I think that's not, that's not a good thing to do. I don't feel the stewardship on that. And the Lord said to me, are you going to obey me or are you going to fuss? And I remember we walked up to that. We, we, uh, we left that little meeting because the, the president shut the country down. While we were in that meeting, it was completely shut down. You remember, bam, it wasn't like a few days and you'll be fine. It was like, bam, like that. And so everybody was freaking out because they had to get back to where they were working in other nations. And so we walk into the airport and there are lines like around the block of that airport everywhere. But because I heard him, she was able to get home. Because there was no way neither one of us would have even thought of getting home. I wasn't home yet. I had to go to California. This is a very important message. And you're wondering if I'm on a rabbit trail. I'm not. I'm really getting to the point. It's really, it, it really is important. So I, I had to fly to California. I thought I was speaking somewhere else because it wasn't, you know, quite shut down like Philippines ex totally like that. And I remember I, I landed and I, I fly down to where my sister lives and um, I, I, I flew and then I drove and I got there and I was thinking, oh, hallelujah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some sleep and I'm going to have some food. I'm just going to rest here. And, and my sister and I start talking. She's a school teacher. She start crying. She's like, this is not good. I think something's really not good. And, and I remember just thinking, oh, you know, it's, it's not that bad. And uh, I, I go upstairs, and I hear the Lord as clearly as anything. I, used to say, I, I generally say I had an impression. This was not that. It was very strong, very strong. Go now, go now, go now, go now, go now. I thought, oh, when the Lord wants to make it clear, 
That could upset the sound booth, but it's okay. I'm going to be, you know, chilling out after that. So go now, go now, go now. And I, I so knew, I so knew this was the voice of God that I took my stuff. And I'm very neat. If you know me, I'm very neat. I like all my stuff neat. I like my suitcase neat. I like my room neat. I like neat. And God sent me to Mozambique. Hallelujah. So there, so it's, I, I want it all neat and in there right you know in the little cubes and and no 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 throw it in throw it in call an uber go 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 i i go in this uber i'm like faster 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 i go to the airport i get to the airport uh and uh, i forgot my passport that's how fast i went now my sister is born again, spirit-filled, lover of Jesus, but she likes to mellow out at night. <laughs> and so I knew that I should have her get in an Uber. Just, if that bothers you, well, hey, I'm just telling you it's wisdom. <laughs> I tell her... <laughs> getting an Uber. She's like, what? I said, now, 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 getting an Uber. I need my passport. She said, where are you? I said, at the airport, LAX. Come, come, come now, 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 getting an Uber. Race, race, race. Another thing was, she'd be so nervous. She'd be flipping out nervous. She was flipping out nervous. She was shaking. Oh, 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 what are you doing? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And she would have crashed the car for sure. <laughs> some of you thought I was talking about something else. Anyway, <laughs> she has nerves. And she makes it to the, the what do you call that? Like where is terminal. Thank you. <laughs> Departure terminal. And she, she's just shaking it. And, and I, it was really good to have an Uber when people are freaking out, you know? <laughs> so we all have weird ways. Anyway. <laughs> She hands me my passport. She's crying, shaking and crying. I'm like, I got to go now. I got some, like, was it through Egypt? E Egypt, wasn't it? Or Ethiopia? Ethiopia, yes. Those are two different countries. <laughs> that Ethiopia and Egypt, different. Some of y'all weren't sure, but I am. <laughs> I'm sure about it. I am. I had to get in the hospital. Never mind, I'm not going to tell you that. that. That would be a rabbit trail, and you wouldn't appreciate it. So I'm in Ethiopia. I get to Ethiopia, and the plane's totally empty, but I got to New York City. No, Washington. Washington. You're looking at your watch. It's going too long. No, it's okay. No, I'm all right. Six, seven, eight. It's nine, nine, twenty. It's, we're good. And this, this is a point that you're going to get. And it's going to stick with you because it's stuck with me. So the plane's pretty much empty, and, and it was actually Washington, D.C., where we landed. And they said, there's no fuel. There's no fuel. There's no fuel. And I said, okay, then I'm on assignment because I knew that I listened. See, when you're listening, you know when you're on assignment. When you're listening to God, you know you're on assignment. Not that you take yourself too seriously, but you know that God has a purpose for every little person on the planet. And if you're on assignment, you're going to fulfill your purpose. He said, I'm, I want you to pray. You're on assignment to pray. And so I started walking in and, and praying over Washington, over the nation, over all the people and all the shaking and all the things that I'd seen in Israel at the end of 2019, the Lord showed me all this shaking, and here it is starting to shake, 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 and I'm walking, and I'm praying, and I'm walking, and I'm praying, and I'm, I'm walking in, and people are crying, and people are freaking out, and the, and the airport 
Everyone's like terrified. The few people who were there were terrified. Everybody is panic stricken and I'm walking and walking. It was about, I, about six hours. I walked and prayed and walked and prayed because I was on assignment. And they told me, well, we don't think any planes are going to leave. I said, yes, they are. I'm on assignment. And I'm meant to go home. I need to get home. And so this plane's leaving. And, and I talked to the person. Finally, they opened a lounge for a little bit. And I talked to them. And they said, no one's going anywhere. I said, oh, yes, you'll see. I, I am. Because <laughs> I heard God and paid for an Uber. <laughs> so it's happening. So... So she, I got on a plane, got to Ethiopia. People were, you think it was freaky before? Wait till you get there, man. People were swinging at one another. Like fist fights breaking out in the airport. There, were, there was no social distancing. distancing. There were thousands, tens of thousands of people jammed in trying to get to a desk to try to get somewhere in the world and no one was going anywhere and I remember I'm on assignment so I started speaking just like you talked about like I didn't need to wait till I got home to start sharing this glorious gospel I started seeing people crying I started seeing I I shared with YWAMers who had no money I didn't just share with them. I made sure they had some money. It's not nice to share with people with no money and not share. So, so I shared with them. Then I found some more people. And, I found, and, and then I, I just started hugging people. I think I had a mask. I think they gave us a mask. I can't remember. I, I can't tell a lie, but I think I, I tried. You know, maybe it's a sideways hug. Oh. Whatever, I was comforting people because they needed to be comforted. I was there for four days sharing the glorious gospel in Ethiopia. I loved every second of it. Hallelujah. When I got, yes, it's so good because God can use any situation. He says, I will work all things together for the good to those who love me and are called according to my purpose. So I can't just be freaking out. They, they gave me a room that was merciful, but I couldn't just be freaking out in there um, and freaking out about what was going on and, and how everything is already up in the air. 2019, end of the year, he already told me uh, it was all going to be up in the air. And he said, just... Uh, your, your calendar is going to be all completely different, completely, totally. Woo, that was for sure for all of us, the whole world. But at least I was prepared. I was prepared because he wooed me to the desert. So I, I was prepared. When I got home, I landed in Maputo and... I, I, had a, I was in a plane where some people from other nations were trying to get back into Mozambique. And uh, with Mozambicans, they ushered everybody and they said, all the forders, get back on the plane, get back on the plane, get back on the plane, get back on the plane. Only they didn't say anything in English. And these poor people were like, what, what, what? I was translating for so many people. I'm like, it's okay, just Voltar, Voltar, Voltar. And it's all going back. They're like, no, no. I said, Voltar, Voltar. <laughs> This end, go, go, go. But I'm like, doesn't mean me. I have a permanent visa, but I'm, you know, I am still melanin challenged. So I'm not blending very well. So I'm sitting there. And this person, Mozambican mama, comes over to me. And she looks at me and she says, first, she tried to say something in English. I said, I didn't know what, I, I wasn't going to listen, for sure. I wasn't going to listen to anything in English, for sure. Because that would be, like, a giveaway. <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know what, it's like, I don't know what she's saying. Sometimes, you know, it's better to be quiet. 
pretend you don't understand. Because she was telling me to leave. She screamed a few words in Shangana, which I also understood. <laughs> she got some people to uh, translate her English to English. Also, <laughs> didn't understand them either. Just sitting there. Finally, I couldn't help myself, and I just, I said, I said, Mama, by the way, some of y'all think that this is weird calling people mama, but in my country, everybody over the age of a certain age, like 20, calls each other mama. <laughs> so, so I'm like, mama, I, I'm not leaving. This is my country. These, this is, these are my people. I, I, I'm from here. She's like, what do you mean you're from here? She's looking at this. That, like, maybe, 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 kind of big, but. Maybe. Just saying. Mozambicanos are very little and not very tall. So she's thinking, I don't think so. I said, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's my country. These are my people. I'm not going anywhere. She says, you have to get on that plane. She's now screaming in Portuguese. I'm like, no. Then I'm, I pull out my secret weapon. Rawling calls it my secret weapon. I start bawling. I'm a woman, it's a, it works, you know, you can do it too late, but, but, you know, it doesn't work for everybody, so I'm crying, and finally, I said, just call. You know, you don't want to pull out the favor cards at first. But when you really need favor, it's like, don't use it all. Like, people, I'm talking, God's favor, use that all the time. I mean, you, you have it or you don't. Like, if you have it, steward it. Anyway, people favor. I said, just call, 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 call the governor. Call the president. I know what he just said, but call him anyway. I said, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. They said, well, the plane's leaving. There's no more planes coming or going. And I said, well, you better hold the plane then. So just hold the plane because I'm not going to leave. Uh, I'm not leaving. I'm very respectful. I'm not leaving. <laughs> and they're like, calm down. Oh, this precious mama's now hugging me. It's okay. It's okay, mama. It's okay. I said, no, it's not. No, it's not. I'm going to get home. And then I said, I have my, my husband's there. My husband's there. My children are there. My grandchildren are there. Let me have the plate. Hold the plate. Finally, somebody called someone. And I walked through, and I'll never forget. It was just the most glorious thing, because I worked in the South for years and years on the streets. And, I, and all these guys that were helping with baggage there, they, they ran right up to me, all of them, no, in mass. They said, Mama, you made it. You made it, Mama, you made it. You made it, you made it, you made it. You made it, you made it. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, Whoa! Oh, they're crying. I'm crying. We're hugging. Oh, she's like, these are these are Muslim Picano that were street guys. You know, they still look like street guys. And she's and this lady's going. <laughs> you really are a mama. I said, yeah. And because I obeyed God, I got home. Because I obeyed God, I've had the greatest privilege in my entire life. The greatest privilege I've had in my entire life of living and working in a war zone where people are being tortured and killed and beheaded and crucified for the gospel and everybody else of a different faith who doesn't believe in the same way as those, that same faith. I, I, I holy, 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 holy. Because I obeyed, I got to go home. 
and work with my brothers and sisters and see the greatest harvest by far that we have ever seen in nearly 30 years. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. My God is God. He is so good. He is so good. It's okay. It's not late. It's not late. It takes me two and a half days to get here. It's not late. <laughs> Second Corinthians 2, 16. If you freely forgive anyone for anything, then I also forgive him. And if I have forgiven anything, I did so for you before the face of Christ. This is Paul. So that we would not be exploited by the adversary Satan, for we know his clever schemes. Do we? We need to know his clever schemes. The enemy wants to separate us. The enemy wants to isolate us and separate us. And some of you are like, well, we were separated. Not, not if you were in the presence of God, you were. Because if there was even one more person, one time we had a lockdown in Mozambique so, so strong that they said, you, you're only allowed to be with one other person, but there's 36 people in most homes, especially because of the war. Could be 40, could be 50. We just all laughed. You saw that hazmat suits? That was pretty funny. One day they told us we needed hazmat suits, so I said, okay. And the, we had a blast that day. We laughed our guts out. <laughs> The guys were like, we're like, we're like Martians. We're like Martians. And they were taking selfies all day long. I'm like, guys, we're here to feed people. They're like, no, no, no. They took so many pictures that day. I've never seen Mozambicanos take so many pictures. They, they just had so much fun with those hazmat suits. And, and, and we tried to do it day two. And they're like, they were like putting their feet in there. It is 120 degrees, you know. So it's like, mom. We can't do it anymore. We just can't do it anymore. We got the picture. We're done. We're just done. We're done. I said, okay, it's all right. Just wear the mask. We'll donate all the hazmat suits. We must have donated thousands of hazmat suits. I'm sure they had a lot of selfies too. Um, anyway, you got to laugh sometimes. So if you're too serious, you're going to be, you're going to die. <laughs> Especially if you're in a war zone. Like, you gotta, you gotta know how to laugh. Forgive one another. You know, we gotta forgive one another. People, people need to forgive one another. We need to forgive one another. We, we, um, we're an amazing, amazingly close family. 99.5% Mozambicanos working together and, uh, we're really strong, but, you know, we still have to forgive each other. Like, we still f offend each other. We do. Maybe you don't, but we do still. <laughs> we still have stuff we need to ask for forgiveness. But the story that I was thinking of when, when I was praying and worshiping here was besides where I started, because I did really feel to start there, and was this guy who I saw just... Um, it was a few days ago, I, I had fun. I, I landed from northern Mozambique, and I have um, grandchildren. Some of them don't look like me, and, uh, but they're mine. And nine of us were, were going, we went to Hershey's uh, Fun Park, straight out, out of the war. They had to leave because of the war. Because their kids, I'm going to say this, because um, we... We need to hear it, I think. So these um, two of these kids, I birthed them in northern Mozambique. I birthed them um, with, with um, one of our doctors. Um, I, I tried to stay up. I just kicked all the equipment off the bed, and uh, I was a little, I wasn't really that helpful, but I, I am an intercessor, so that worked. And I prayed, you know, and every time uh, this precious daughter of mine, went into labor, she'd squeeze my hand, and I'd wake up, every time I was on it. And so 
this, the first baby, I remember birthing him, and then the next one, uh, I had to go speak somewhere. I can't remember where, but I, I said, she was at a one, any of you mothers, she was like at a one, and then she was a two, but I had to get on a plane in, in um, about an hour. So I said, one to 10, one to 10, one to 10 in Jesus' name. And she, she went to a 10, squeezed my hand, shakarabakaya, I prayed well then too. And Micah was born. That was cool. So that didn't happen all the time, but it's really awesome when it does. So, and uh, I got on the plane with my same clothes on, man. I just lifted them up, off I ran. And... Um, Got on. So these were the kids, and they had to leave Mozambique because they're, they were talking to their mom and dad and said, you know, when Al Shabab comes to our door, because they are across the street from us, and Al Shabab, um, these radicals who are, are killing so many people all the time, burning um, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of homes, they're like, they caught a whole bunch of them, like from here to there, you know, in the next house one over. And so the kids said, when El Shabaab comes to our door, can we, um, re- can we just d- deny Jesus and then we'll ask him back in as soon as they leave? And these are little, these are little guys, you know? And so when, when you hear that, mom and dad were like, yeah, we want to get them. They just felt led to come here. And um, so they're here and I wanted to have fun. I didn't want to talk about the war. I wanted to go on roller coasters. That's what I did. Got off the plane, onto the roller coasters. Shook the jet lag right out of me. It's like, I was good. That's a free point. So a couple of days ago, before, before the roller coasters, so we're, on, we're all on a pretty big old roller coaster right now. I was, um, I was in a village, and this guy, this little guy, really little guy, like he was so skinny, and he's wearing a ragged old shirt, and he's so skinny, he's like tiny, tiny man. He, was, he, was, he just said, I just can't, I haven't been able to eat. And he's, he's telling me he was skinny. I'm like, yeah, you are, you are, you are, yeah. I didn't argue. Like, you were so skinny. And he's sharing. His name's Rashid, and he said they, they beheaded my, my cousin, and that they beheaded. He just kept going on. I mean, I, I listen to this day in and day out, day in and day out, and I'm there day in and day out listening and, and weeping with those who weep. And he said, and then they took my sister and they chopped off her legs in front of me, and then they chopped off her head in front of me. But he said, I, I just, I just, uh, I'm a lover of Jesus. So I just prayed, I prayed, I prayed. And they put her in a pot and they said I had to eat her. And, and I'm like, I'm just there, and I, I do these interviews over and over and over, and I, I'm just like, my stomach, my heart, my soul, I'm thinking, I, I had to go for that huge, long introduction to get to this point, because if I hadn't have gone there, you, you all would have just like blanked out in the beginning and never come back. But there I was listening to this amazing man, Rashid, and he said, he said, the spirit of Jesus rescued me because they suddenly left. And I got to bury the body parts of my sister. And I'm thinking, Lord, I really want to know what it is to be truly born again. I want to really know what it truly is to be born again, really, truly born again in love. And then he said, I forgave them for they know not what they do. We're sitting, literally sitting in the dirt, and he's sharing his story. And then I hear another story. And then I hear another one. But he says, the spirit of Jesus, God rescued me. And instead of him being bitter and angry, and if anyone has a right to be bitter and angry, 
that man does, doesn't he? Rush, he, like, that's justifiable anger. And insane pain, beyond, beyond insane pain. I've lost so many hundreds and hundreds of people and hundreds of thousands of people in our congregations have lost everything. Their home, their church, everything. And I have so many new stories that I don't have to tell you any old ones. This is Rashid a couple of days ago. And he rocked my world. He's rocked my world. I thought people all want, you know, impartation and trying to figure out when to ordain who. And uh, I knew exactly what to do. This might challenge some people. I said, um, Manu Rashid, would you like to uh, pastor, pastor some people? Because he, he got an audio solar Bible, and he, he was like, all I want to do is just help. I just want to help. He didn't even care about the food. As skinny, skinny as he was, he did not care about the food. He said, I don't care about the food. I'm thinking you should care about the food. He didn't. He's like, I just want the word. I just want the word. And I just want to share the word of God with everybody. I want everyone to know Jesus. I want everybody to know Jesus. And I'm thinking, Lord, teach me what it looks like to love. I want to love like Rashid. I want to forgive like Rashid. I want to know Jesus like Rashid knows Jesus. And none of you are going to meet him probably on this planet. But you're going to meet him in heaven. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to remember this night. Because in heaven, you know, we have time. And you're going to meet him. You're going to sit with him. You're going to talk to him about how worthy Jesus is and was and always will be. You're going to be with him, worshiping for the rest of eternity. You're going to be with Rashid. And you're going to meet his congregation. You're going to meet the people that he's poured into. See, we're all little people. But if God could take each one of us in this room, and, and we would be the oily ones, the oily ones, we'd be so full of oil that he would just, he would just dip us in those paints. And he would start painting his picture. And then if we could truly get to a place where, where we, we step out of the way. We just step out of the way. And if people don't understand, we step out of the way again and then we go low. And then we go low and we go slow and we step out again and we go low and we just point. Say, look at this. We're, we're the, the brushes, and I know we're sons and daughters. I do. I know we're sons and daughters, but we're also servants. Laid down lover servants, and, and God wants to paint a picture through every one of us. And an artist, generally, when they're painting a masterpiece, Ah, they use a few brushes. So don't be nervous uh, when God picks up somebody next to you. He's a master artist. He, he's, he's painting and painting and painting, and he's making history through our little lives. He's doing what he wants to do. He's fulfilling his plan. And, and our beautiful job is to yield to the lamb who was slain, just to yield and love. I like to end with um, reading these words uh, from Second Corinthians. And I have, I know some people get upset if you uh, share, read from a certain translation, but right now we're working in Yao Mwani, Kim Mwani. <sighs> Makandi, Makua. So 
I could have picked one of those to read to you in, but I, did, I just figured <laughs> I'd, I'd read the Passion version. So, just saying, we get, we get really concerned, you know. But some people are really grateful to have the Word of God in their heart language. Really, really grateful. Um, I actually feel led now. Um, I actually feel like this is important. If, if you wouldn't mind to stand with me, please. This is... Uh, the grace of Christ. And I, I, I'd like to read this, but I, I'm just going to pause for a moment. Close my eyes and pause. If you need to leave um, before the next 10 minutes, then this is super perfect time. If you would like to stay, then um, it's, it's 10 more minutes so, and I mean this with so much love and respect. It's just, I know if we're fully present with him, things, are, things shift. And some of you have children you need to go home and pay your babysitters or you need to, you have to get to a work, you have to get to sleep, you have to watch the news, there are di all different things that need to be done. And I, I respect that, and I, I really respect that. But if, if we stay, then we're going to stay now for another nine minutes. So otherwise, just, just make your way out. I'm going to give you a few more, few more seconds here. And then I'm going to ask, really, that the rest of us wouldn't, we wouldn't be leaving beforehand. Why? Because we, we want to fix our eyes on, on Jesus with intention and fully present, not thinking about what else we have to do. So if that's not possible for you, that's okay. Be, feel free. And if you want to fellowship outside, there's so many things, you see, and... and I just spoke about forgiveness. Don't judge somebody who needs to leave. Some people just need to leave or want to leave. They're ready to leave. There are all kinds of reasons that you may not know why people do things. Thank you, Jesus. This is um, Second Corinthians 2.14. God always makes his grace visible in Christ, who includes us as partners of his endless triumph. Christ, just feel the joy. Maybe, maybe just open, open your hands and this is, this is, I'm having an altar call not to lay hands on everyone. I'll lay hands on people I feel led to lay hands on. So please don't come up to me uh, to ask me to lay hands on you because there's a whole beautiful ministry team. And I believe as we minister to where the Holy Spirit's leading us to minister, then, then something takes place. And there is something where some people are meant to receive and some are meant to, to impart and to pray. And so if... If in this house uh, you're released to pray for people, ask the Lord. But we're going to do it in a different way right now. I'm, I believe the Lord, he, he wants to call people to partnership. And often when we hear the word partnership, we think that it has to do with somebody getting our address and email. But this is much different than that. What we're what I see the Lord saying is he, he's asking those who would come into communion with him, into union and communion as partners, as partners, that you would be free to come and just kneel down, lay down on the altar, uh, uh, 
just come to the altar and, and just say, I do, Lord, I want to partner with you. God, take me, take my little life, Lord, and, and light me on fire. 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 And this is between you and him. There's all, the reason I call people forward is I know what it means to make a move. There's something about making a move that shifts the position inside of us. There's something that happens when we make a move, where we make a move. There's something else that happens when people show, start praying over us. So prayer team, ask Jesus where to go. And, and, and if you feel anyone on the prayer team feels to kneel down, lay down, uh, prostrate yourself on the altar, you feel free to do that. Show Rabbah say, tonight is about partnership. It's about partnership. Partnering in his endless triumph. Even though this has been the most painful trial that Roland and I and the people we love and work with have ever seen at the same time we have never seen such endless triumph as hundreds and thousands of people are giving their lives to the Lord Jesus people that mocked us in village after village after village they're no longer mocking now they're they're bowing their knees to Jesus. They're saying, of course, we'll follow Jesus because they see the difference. They see the difference, what love looks like and what very frightening, scary religion looks like. And they see the difference and they're just saying, yes, 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 yes. There's zero mocking going on right now in more northern Mozambique. Zero mocking. Zero mocking. Shokorobo, zero mocking. And as America shakes, and America quakes, and as bread lines and soup kitchens and food pantries are, are going to be needed um, exponentially in this nation, there's something to do with partnership that touches the heart of God. I want to ask ministers in the house to start laying hands on people the Holy Spirit's showing you. Holy Spirit's crashing in on some people for in a very powerful way. And when your faith hits their faith, something changes. So ask the Lord where to go. And then go go there and just start praying more, Lord, more, Lord. Whatever you're doing in them, Holy Spirit, more, more, more. Yield yourself to God. As soup kitchens and food pantries and every kind of, of need for where all kinds of aid starts to increase in the United States of America. If you can remember this message, if you can remember this partnership, if you can remember, Sheikh Rabbah, that God wants to place provision in your hands for the hungry, provision in your hands for the hungry, for the hurting, for the sick, for the war torn, in your own nation, Shokorobo Karaba She, as well as the nations of the world. First thing when the war in Ukraine broke out. First thing our movement did was start to send people in food, people in food, people in food. Why? Because that's what we would do. We don't even have to know um, all the logistical situation. We just have to say yes, and God will multiply it. Through, through our yielded lives, he spreads more Holy Spirit. Here we go. And if you could turn turn me up just a moment, this is where I'll strain my voice. Thank you. Our yielded lives, through our yielded lives, he spreads the fragrance, holy, of the knowledge of God. Lord, I feel like there's going to be a fragrance in this room tonight a fragrance as lives are being laid upon this altar entrepreneurs and physicians and scientists and professors and administrators and artists of all sorts 
Oh, all hands on deck. It's what I got at the beginning of the pandemic. It's what I get again now. All hands on deck. 911. Psalm 911. We have become the unmistakable aroma of the victory of the anointed one. I feel like we need some more ministers to pray over people. You know who you are. Show Rabasaya, because I feel there's something about the fact that we were in isolation for so long that as someone literally comes and places their hand upon our head or our shoulder, there, there's something powerful about that. We, for so long, there was so, so long that, that there was no ability to do that. So I feel like there's something important about laying hands on people. Holy Spirit's touching. So more and more of you begin. Just to lay, physically lay hands upon them. Oh, more Holy Spirit. We've become the unmistakable aroma of the victory of the anointed one to God. We have become the unmistakable aroma of the victory of the anointed one to God, a perfume of life to those who are being saved and the odor of death to those who are perishing. It's why you're seeing a great divide because you are as a believer, a lover of King Jesus, the lamb who was slain, both the lion, the lamb in one man. You're a perfume of life to those who are being saved and the odor of death to those who are perishing. The unbelievers smell a deadly stench that's why hatred's rising. They smell a deadly stench that leads to death, but believers smell the life-giving aroma, holy, that leads to abundant life. And who of us could rise to this challenge? Who of us could rise to the challenge? Let there be an answer in you tonight. Let there be some kind of answer in you tonight. Say, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, oh God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, I want to rise to the challenge, Lord, as the world shakes, as United States shakes, as the world shakes, as wars and famines and rumors of wars and earthquakes and cyclones and fires and floods and Hatred and division are all just all over the earth. Oh God, oh God, oh God, I want to rise. I want to rise to the challenge, Lord. I want to rise up, Lord, to the challenge, Lord. I want to be the, the smell of life-giving aroma. I want oil, Lord. Oh God, pray for oil. If you're on the ministry team, Pray for oil, oil, oil. If you're just praying on your own, pray oil, 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 oil. For unlike so many. So we're rising up to this challenge. He's Paul asks, who, who, who will rise up to the challenge? For unlike so many, we are not peddlers of God's word who watered down the message. Since our goal is not to extract money from people, our goal is not just to have more people in a building, but our goal, our desire, our pursuit, our passion is to become one with the Lord. 
is to be the bride of Christ on this planet, to be the fragrance of Jesus in a dying, broken, hurting world that's full of fear and full of anxiety and pain and sickness. The Lord's healing people even now as ministry teams pray. If you're sick, if you're, if you have hearing problems, stomach problems, cancer problems, brain problems, mental illness problems, dementia problems, knee problems, foot problems, any kind of problem as people come around and they lay hands on you, go ahead and just squeeze their hand indicating I also need a healing, I also need a healing. God's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God. He can heal any kind of disease in a moment. He can do anything, anytime through anyone. So just press in for the one who is worthy. And, and if you need to leave now, um, this is the second time we're releasing people to go. Um, please feel free so that those who are, are receiving ministry and those who are praying, they're free to stay. You see, if people are free to go, then others are free to stay. Then everything is so much easier. Unlike so many, we're not peddlers of God's word who water down the message. Why would we water down the message? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We are those sent from God with pure motives who speak in the sight of God from our union with Christ. So right now, Shera Baba ba. Could we pray this? And as the, the worship team, you may, we're gonna, we're just gonna sing to him right now, not about him, but to him. We're gonna sing to him. So we want him. We want him. We just want him, and he uses his people. We want union with Christ. Second Corinthians 3, 3. As a result of our ministries, you are living letters written by Christ. That's who you are. You're living letters. You're living letters written. Living letters written by Christ. Not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. Not carved onto stone tablets, but on tablets of tender hearts. Would you, as you put us on the wheel tonight, Lord, would you would you just pour out the oil? Would you pour out the wine? Would you pour out the oil? Would you pour out the wine? Would you pour out the water? Would you pour it out on the dry, the dry vessels, Lord? Where they've been so isolated, God, would you pour out upon the dry vessels. We get to be together. So tonight, we're gonna pray over one another because we're free, we're free, we're free right this moment. We're free right this moment to pray over one another, to minister to one another, to lay hands on one another. So we're gonna do that because we are the living letters. We carry this confidence in our hearts because of our union with Christ before God. We want union, Lord. Union, Lord. Union, Lord. Union, Lord. Union, Lord. We don't see ourselves as capable enough to do anything in our own strengths. This is, right now, this is where everything will shift. 
If you can understand the words of Paul, the apostle who wrote the majority of the New Testament inspired by the power of Holy Spirit. He said, this is the greatest missionary, the greatest apostle that ever walked the planet Earth. He says, we don't see ourselves as capable enough to do anything in our own strength. Can you get to that place right now where you just know you can't do anything in your own strength? I'm so aware of this. I'm so aware of this fact that I could do nothing of lasting value, nothing whatsoever in my own strength. For our true competence and my true competence flows from God's empowering presence. Whoa! She la 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 Keep singing, oh Spirit of the Lord's on you. Keep singing, keep singing, keep singing, keep singing, keep singing, keep singing. Oh, yeah, la 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 Oh, true confidence flows from God's empowering presence. He alone makes us adequate ministers who are focused on an entirely new covenant. Our ministry is not based on the letter of the law, but through the power of the Spirit. The letter of the law kills, but the Spirit pours out life. Oh, young man, young man in the red plaid, red shirt, sing, 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 sing. Spirit of the Lord's on you. Sing out, sing out, sing out, sing out, sing out, sing out. You, you, red and black, you, you, sing, 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 sing. sha la 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 na na ma say Go ahead. The word of the Lord's on you. The spirit of the Lord's on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, 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 go. she le 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 Yep, 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 yep. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Shola la 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 la. Shola la 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 la. More, 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 more. Shola la 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 la. Please, I beg it, you know. Look at me. Just worship, worship, worship. Shela la 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 la. Shela la 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 la. Shela la 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 la. A breaker anointing, a breaker anointing, a breaker anointing. There's a sound. There's a sound. Lift it up. There's a sound of freedom. There's a sound. Where you know, Shalalalalanai. Shalalalanai, Christ in you, the hope of glory. More, 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 more. Shame.
The sound of the lovers of God, the sound of the lovers of God, the sound of the lovers of God who aren't afraid, who are not afraid.
into the glory we can we can but there are people still looking at even though God uses us to pray and, and agree with what Holy Spirit's doing tonight it's about every believer in this place just being fully yielded partnering 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 with him and I keep, I keep hearing him say, just let out the sound, the sound. The Lord made each one of you an instrument. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. More, 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 more. just ripped right off your mouth. Show, show, show. Now would be a good time to sing. <laughs> oh yeah. Now would be a good time. Show, 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 show. More Lord. Show, more Lord. Show. More, more. Thank you. Shh. Fire of love. Mike wants this. Yeah. They can go further, but it's up to them.
It's so beautiful You're beautiful So beautiful You're beautiful So So beautiful, so beautiful Come and behold him. Isn't he fascinating? Come and behold him. Get lost in his majesty. Come and behold him. Isn't he fascinating? And we'll keep on singing for all of eternity. Lost in your majesty for all of eternity. Get lost in your majesty for all of eternity. We'll get lost in your majesty. For all of eternity, get lost in your majesty. Come and behold, so come and behold him. Isn't he fascinating? Come and So beautiful
So is that a fragrance Then I'll pour my oil out Is it a life laid down And here I give my vow Is it a song I sing Then here's every melody Tell me what moves you Is it a fragrance then I'll pour my oil out Is it a life laid down? Then here I give my vow Is it a song I sing? Then here's every melody Tell me what moves you Cause I just want to move your heart It's all I want to do I just want to stand it all And pour my oil on you No matter how much the cost I freely give it all to you I just want to move your heart Get caught up in your gaze Right here in your presence, God It's where I want to stay Oh, just to dwell in your house Waste my hours and my days on you Is it a fragrance that I'll pour my oil out? Is it a life laid down? Then here I give my vow. Is it a song I sing? Then here's every melody. Oh, tell me what moves you. I gotta know, I gotta know. And tell me what moves you I gotta know, I gotta know Or tell me what moves you I gotta know, I gotta know And tell me what moves you I gotta know, I gotta know Cause I just wanna move your heart It's all I want to do, I just want to stand in awe And pour my love on you, no matter how much the cost I freely give it all to you, oh, to you I just want to move your heart Get caught up in your gaze Right here in your presence, God It's where I want to stay Oh, just to dwell in your house Waste my hours and my days on you It's for you Oh It's for you, oh, for you. 
It's for you, all for you. It's for you, all for you. It's for you, all for you. It's for you. Breathing in it all to 